Phoenix Down Radio is on the air. Welcome everybody to Phoenix Down Radio, episode number 154. I'm your host, Klaus Nightbringer. Joining me this week, we have Talis and Sayer. What's going on, guys? Everything, everything at once, forever. Everything all the, all the time. time. Everything all the time. I can That's a good song. It is. It's so it relatable. Is. No, I'm just concurring about everything happening at the same time. Because, yeah, it is. 100%. Somebody slow down this uh, ride I want to get off. How is it October? Yeah. How is it October? It's spooky well, season. First it was September. Shut up. Well, and then it's <laughs> January. First it was March. <laughs> and then it was March, and then it was March, and then it was March. Uh, anyway. Hi. Yeah, it's been a quick year. It's been a crazy couple of years already, but stuff's starting to get uh, a little crazy. We'll, we'll we'll talk about some of it and uh, coming up here in the news. I'm gonna change yep, yep. this real quick. So we want to reach out to somebody. Um, what have you been up to the last two weeks? Let's start with that. I dropped out of college. <laughs> Man, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I did actually. No, so I'm changing my uh my career, my degree focus. But because of the way the school is set up, there isn't an open spot in the focus that I want until January. So I have to take three months off, and then I can come back. So instead of doing twelve months straight, I did one month. I'm taking three months off, and then I'm doing eleven months straight. Okay, that's slightly more reasonable. Yes, it's. I mean, I would like to do the old school of like two and a half months, a month off, two and a half months, a month off. That's really nice, but that's yep. not how school works. That's not how master's programs work. So that's not what I'm doing. That does seem like a suboptimal way to run things. I don't know what's going on with that. It is a little weird to do two and a half weeks of work in six days every week for a year. That's going to suck, but there's a goal at the end so it's worthwhile yeah also oh. i've decided to do the stupidest thing as far as anime viewing that i've done in a very long time and mind you i watched through all of the original Yu-Gi-Oh over the summer i've I decided watched- to watch the dumbest anime i've watched ever in my whole wide life i'm going to watch the like whole that's thing a high bar to clear in spite i am going to watch it okay mm. I'm Despite watching, watching Final Fantasy Unlimited. <laughs> oh god, oh no. <laughs> the Magan. It's thawed. so bad! <laughs> it's so bad! It's completely plotless, it makes no sense. There's no story. The animation's janky. I can't okay. wait. I want to remind you, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 800-273-8255. You don't need to go through this alone, man. What? I didn't hate it. It's like, I've watched worse, but like, it took a lot to find worse. This is some very plotless, janky stuff. But I, if you look at the cast and you look at the production teams, like, the people that were on it were really good. So, like, I'm kind of interested to see, like, what were we at in this era? Because, like, rewatching Naruto, I'm like, woof, this was made 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. it's very much in 4x3. Oh, plot development doesn't work that way in manga anymore. <laughs> like, it's kind of interesting to see some of the bits of it that have dated There's while still staying very bits, timeless. Some bits that are products of a certain era. For sure. See, if it was uh, just for stupid anime stuff, I was going to talk about watching the entirety of Endless 8. That's worth also it. so ridiculous. worth it. Well, uh, I'm so good at troll. I'm Ravenheart contem- 3, did you guys see the intro for the live-action Cowboy Bebop? And I'm actually contemplating uh, restarting my subscription to Netflix just to watch it. Yes, it looks pretty uh, damn good. So it's confession looks- time, I- confession time, I've never seen Cowboy Bebop. Please don't kill me. No, right. don't worry about now, it. Now, kicking I've uh, watched like there. five episodes. I, okay, guys, this is a solo podcast now. <laughs> just kidding. No, oh. I watched the five episodes because it's the, one of those shows that has something for everyone, which I hate. Like, I would rather it be focused on a thing that's really good. If it's a good thing that I don't care for, that's fine. 
but I'd rather things be focused, and Cowboy Bebop wasn't great. But the Fridge episode is fucking amazing. Out of context, you need to know nothing about the show. You can just watch the Fridge episode, and it's fine. And excellent the, the Mushroom episode. Mushroom episode is good. That's, I think that um, was my, probably my favorite, though um, that Fridge episode is definitely way up there. I can't wait to see how they uh, tackle that one in uh, live action. If they do something I, yeah, like I'm that. excited. <laughs> I'm excited. But yes, uh, we did watch that one, Ravenheart. It does look really good. There's a side-by-side -side that they've already released for it. Um, it's going to be something that I think we all approach very differently as a casual non-fan, as a didn't watch it, please don't kill me, and as a very big fan, we're all going to kind of approach that whole story in a unique way. I'm excited to talk about it later. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, definitely. And I guess as long as we're covering stuff that we did over the last few weeks, besides go absolutely berserk with trying to keep up with everything for library reopening, we still don't know when in-person programming is happening, and they keep hearing different things and everyone is anxious. Mm. But besides that, uh, I ended up crafting a whole bunch of thing, uh, Exarchic gear for a friend who is returning. Hmm. He seems very happy with it. Very cool. Exarchic like, does look really cool. Yeah, it looks really cool, and I was like, yes, I can bring together all of the supply chain powers I have owned over the past whatever. And also clear your inventory of crafting materials that you won't need seven weeks from now. Yeah, I've been doing a bit of that. Like, it is a traditional thing. It's like pre-expansion cleaning. Mm. Nice Greet the, uh, Greet the new world with a nice empty gobby bag, or I guess it's not a gobby bag in this one. Does this, is there a name for our inventory? I don't remember. Oh god, what can I choke about saddlebags? I didn't even think about that. <laughs> oh god. Sir, hey, I'm gonna make bag. my life easier and less complicated. Immediately thinks about a thing that you've completely ignored for like six months. <laughs> to be fair though, that's most people. There's a I lot of relics. <laughs> There's a lot of partially completed relic weapons in here. Well, I think mine's just all my materia. I have lots of fireworks in mine. Because you never know when you're going to need fireworks. No, I like the idea of loading up your chocobo saddlebags with fireworks and then send them charging in. <laughs> hey, we're going to fight this bomb. <laughs> uh, Gotta cover, seems guys. Bad. Oh, seems dear. bad. <laughs> Fun to watch, but seems bad. Seven Deadly Streamers, Josh, make your own damn gear. He'll be fine. <laughs> <sighs> well, last weekend, I helped a buddy build a computer. Ooh. It was actually quite fun. It was nice, because when I got my new computer, I kind of missed out on most of that. I mean, I did go in and uh, upgrade a number of pieces, you know, already, but... You know, to build it from scratch is definitely uh, something that <clears throat> everybody should try or experience at least once. The last time I built a computer, hard drives were this big and about this thick. Mm -hmm. and, and, it's been and, a while. And about a, a tenth of the size in, as far as capacity. I was going to say, I think I had a 750 gig drive and it was like $300 to buy it or something absolutely batshit. And now that's just not... And it was the way it works anymore. Orange is so cheap now. Yeah, I mean, you can get a four terabyte spinning disk drive for like 80 bucks. You can get uh, a, a terabyte or, uh, SSD NVMe drive that's just blazingly fast, you know, for like 100. You can just store all of the information. Why not? You've got the space. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I switched to doing laptops instead of desktops, so now I'm like, I don't have to buy hard drives. They come pre-installed with a keyboard and a screen. <laughs> it, there's still something about, you know, putting it together yourself, though. That's, that's oh, really for fun. sure. But yes, we spent a good chunk of the day, uh, you know, building that. We went to Micro Center, you know, to look around at stuff, you know, because it always, you always forget something when you're, when you're putting together a computer. Um, Micro Center, for those who don't know, is just Home Depot for nerds. <laughs> You're not wrong. It, 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 it's a magical oh, it place. It, it, it's a, an a extremely magical place that still doesn't have graphics cards, however. No, oh, yeah, no graphics cards. cards. <laughs> yeah, we were trying to look at upgrading some of the stuff for the video game lounge. It's like PS5, 
maybe two years from now. Not even because of budget, just because of when are we even going to have supply. Yeah, because the minute a store gets one in stock, I mean, Best Buy has already had a few stores Our procurement that have had in process stock. is not compatible yeah. with sitting on Target's website refreshing it. Yeah. No, I mean, there, there have been some in stock even in store at Best Buy's, but as soon as they're, I mean, they only have a few of them and people are lined up and they're yeah. gone. The procurement process is not compatible with this kind of thing. Which is sad. Oh. It's government work. It is what it is. It is what it is. Or you can always do the the same route as the uh, the Joy Cons and just put it on somebody's. Uh... <laughs> he speaks wisdoms. I mean, he writes wisdoms. <laughs> the taco Hang break. On. What are we gonna do? For those, given that this is a audio medium for some folks, uh, Talos has put up a sign saying "Taco Break." So apparently, he isn't going to enjoy another taco while Sarah and I continue to BS about random things. I'm going to go ahead and mute the mic so y'all don't have to deal with me taking a potato chip and eating it on the podcast. That would be gross. <laughs> we, do, we don't need I mean, uh, theory, Talos's ASMR uh, lunch eating. In theory, we could actually Oof. get to like the word thing. Talk about some contest winners, perhaps? Yes. Okay. We could get Talk to, like, about some contest, contest winners? But, uh, no. Feel shame. I say it works. <laughs> Even though it was supposed to be. And making it take much longer for Talos to eat his taco. But yes, we did have a contest uh, two, uh, two episodes ago. And we have some winners. Uh, I was able to p pick up a couple of extra 60-day um, time cards. I actually found a really good deal on them. So I figured, well, let's uh, give some more stuff away to people. Um, so I went ahead and, and uh, picked everybody who uh, entered our contest and we picked random numbers. Uh, congratulations to Tibiant for winning his uh, choice of what Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster game he wants. Um, he already has all of them, so he's going to let us know when the next one comes out so we can pick that up for him. <laughs> 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 Which is perfectly fine. I mean, you know, I, I did say whichever one you wanted, and if you've already got them all, well, we'll see when five comes out. Uh, mm. Congrats to Ravenheart for winning the chokeable carriage mount. Ooh. That is a mount that, like, people have heard me say, ever since I saw the Chocobo carriages in 1.0, I was like, I hope we get to drive those someday. And they are kind of neat looking. I ended up buying one for myself as well. You're going to be living the dream, Ravenheart. <laughs> uh, congrats to... My dream, but... <laughs> Master Shake and Susan Sprinkle for each winning 60-day time cards. So thank Ooh. you so much for that. Um, but we did have somebody who entered our contest and forgot to follow. So if you no. are listening uh, at Rasmus Fu, Rasmus Fugel on, on, on Twitter, um, send us a follow and, and a quick message so we can uh, get you your, your time card. I will uh, tweet out at you as well, but uh, if you are listening or watching this, make sure to uh, give us a follow and, let us, and send us a, uh, a message so that way we can uh, get you your code. Yeah, this is, uh, I believe, what the officer called a correctable violation, wherein if you pay your registration, you're not going to get actually ding the cost of a ticket. The metaphor is not quite perfect here, but, you know, close enough. So, yeah, make, if, just a, as a friendly reminder, if you enter one of our Twitter contests, make sure to follow us so we can send you a message. Makes it much easier. But, uh, sounds good. That was a lot of fun. We appreciate everybody who entered, and, and for once, not everybody who entered won, <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of nice. Also, kind of sad that we don't get to give everybody prizes. I wish I could, but um, yeah, we'll look definitely look out for more contests in the future. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into some gaming community news. I mean, we're already jumping into 2022 with this first uh, bit of news. Uh, they sh uh, showed a new uh, 35th anniversary logo for Final Fantasy uh, for its 35th anniversary next year. And it, God, 35th anniversary already? Yeah. It looks so good. It, it's a good logo. We've got like our classic Warrior of Light there, Amano style. Oh, takes you back. Yep. 
and then uh, with you know Final Fantasy 35th anniversary, it it looks pretty cool actually. I was able to find a smaller image that I uh, uh, copied into the, uh, the the chat, but uh, mm. wow, time is just kind of doing crazy Did shit this year. The Final Fantasy series is now old enough to run for president. I mean, it's not a naturalized citizen, so it can't. No. But otherwise. You can run no, for other offices. Have, it's not even naturalized citizen. I think it's you do have to be native. You, you uh, have president and vice president born. do have to be native born. That is correct. Welcome to, yeah. uh, to social chat. <laughs> social studies. <laughs> God, but yeah, have... like otherwise, the Final Fantasy series could totally be president. That's first the order only thing stopping it. <laughs> first order of business, change the national anthem to the Final Fantasy theme. It sounds like a freaking national anthem. God damn it. So that, that That's will... the one when we like win a war. <laughs> I'm not gonna I there's so much there. I don't even know where to start, man. All right, next up then. <laughs> We don't win anything. Anyway. We, we've broken Talisman. Oh, again. Jesus. All right. Speaking of, uh, we were talking a bit about various things that are reopening, and it looks like the Final Fantasy concert, A New World, is going to be coming back. They're starting their tour bookings for next year. Yep. Uh, for those of you who do want to spend some time hanging out with uh, Klaus, other friends of the pod, they're going to be in St. Paul on March 18th of 2022, which is the same weekend as Anime Detour. So if you're going to be meeting up uh, with Klaus and company that... Uh, for Anime Detour, make sure to grab a ticket at ffnewworld.com. Uh, they are also announcing other locations, uh, San Diego, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Dusseldorf, Germany, among others. Uh, those tickets will start going on sale, it looks like, Tuesday. Yep, Tuesday, October 5th at 10 uh, a.m. Central Time. So, at least for the, for the, uh, the St. Paul show. I think some of the others might be going on sale 10 a.m. local time for wherever those shows are occurring. But, uh, yeah, if, if you have the opportunity to go to one of these, it's basically a small chamber orchestra doing uh, arrangements of Final Fantasy songs, and it's amazing. It's yeah, have yourself a nice little classy evening. Maybe yeah. wear fancy clothes. Make it a date night or something. You don't have to wear fancy clothes, but I am contemplating if I want to go uh, cosplay, since it is during Detour. Like, the first concert I went to, because it was, like, one of the earliest video game concerts for Final Fantasy, I went ahead and dressed up. I was like, no, this is going to be a proper symphony event. It was nice. It made it special. If you enjoy doing that kind of thing. From time to time. It helps to have, like, nice clothes that are actually well-fitted instead of off the rack from Mervyn's. Just saying. Yeah, I was at a party today that was apparently fancy dress that I didn't know about until last night at 1130. And my response was, I have a pair of pants that doesn't have cargo pockets and a shirt that doesn't have a meme on it. That's what you're getting from me. <laughs> I once had to explain to my landlord why a tuxedo T-shirt, like the T-shirt with a tuxedo on it, and Vibram Five Finger Shoes were not appropriate wedding attire. He genuinely did not understand. His girlfriend appreciated my intervention, and it turned out I had a jacket that was about his size. The shoes are honestly a little bit more egregious. The t-shirt you can just lean into and probably pull off, depending on your personality. Uh... I'm also from a place where we go to the orchestra wearing, like, a t-shirt and a pair of jeans, so... <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the opera and stuff like that, you actually do get an interesting mix, and it's bringing a nice egalitarian vibe to it, which I do appreciate. Yep. Though but, like, for a friend's friend wedding, show a little, like, respect. Yes, though I will say these concerts are a little bit more on the casual side, not quite as on, mm -hmm. on the large scale of uh, um, uh, distant worlds. Oh, yeah, you don't have to or go fancy. I just like that kind of thing. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm assuming that if, if they were ever in the Bay Area, or the next time they are in the Bay Area, Sayer, you'll, you'll be going <laughs> in a nice uh, nice jacket with, a, with some pleated slacks or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that was the other thing I think I mentioned. So I've mentioned to some of you there op uh, opening up uh, interviews for full-time library positions. I was very panicked at first because I was talking with my parents. My mom did the usual, do you have a nice suit to wear for? I was like, you ask this every time. Of course, I... Oh no, pandemic weight. I don't. 
Hey, oh, Sarah, shit. can I interest you in an exercise bike? It's off screen. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> Apparently, they do conduct the interviews over the internet now, so I just need a nice shirt and to not stand up suddenly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> or just get a jacket, do the jacket over the uh, over the reasonably nice, not cotton t-shirt, and it's not so bad. There are some options here. And, and just hope that the next interview is not in person. That, yeah, oh. that... Then you have to commit. But like, I went to Car yeah. and Michael's wedding in a Magic the Gathering t-shirt. You'll be fine. Then oh. again, you're also the marvelous one, so. So speaking of Magical Gatherings, the new Stranger of the, uh, Paradise <laughs> was... demo trailer and release date are up. That was uh, weak. That what? was weak. <laughs> was so bad. God damn it. <laughs> I am so tired. Fine, you do the thing. <laughs> So, the new Stranger no, Paradise no. demo trailer and release date are up Hold on Eurogamer. You, you, you what? started out by saying, speaking of other strange things. You mean stranger things? Wait, no, different no, thing. That's a totally different thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, and yes, keep going with the thing. We are going to get to the music if it kills us. Yes, um, <laughs> it was announced at TGS uh, this, this past, uh, actually yesterday. Um, they, yeah, yes, they gave okay. us a new trailer. A new release date and a new demo, which has some multiplayer aspects to it as well. I'm going to link this uh, article from Eurogamer here. I actually want a PS5 now, just because like now this is two demos I haven't gotten to play, and I'm very sad about it. The first demo, I wasn't impressed. I do have the second demo because after watching the trailer, which I'm going to link here in just a second, um, it actually gives us some story beats and it's actually kind of interesting at this point but holy shit is there a lot of stuff happening on march 18th 2022 because that's when also this game is really being released oh that's a bunch of stuff so i think mm -hmm. that, um if you pre-order it right now you can uh, get uh early access so maybe i'll have to do that um, but yeah, the, if you have a PS5, the, um, demo lasts, uh, through August 11th. So I would definitely look into getting into that uh, and giving October it a October 11th? Is that not what I said? I said August, I heard, homie. August, oh, my bad. It is October, yeah. <laughs> no, it, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it ended two months ago. Sorry, you're out of luck. Good lord, I know the PS5 hasn't been available for a while, but, like, time travel doesn't work that way. <laughs> oh, I tried. <laughs> but yeah, so like you got yourself a week and a half to give it a go. Definitely. Um, and I'm like I said, I'm probably maybe give it a little bit of a go tomorrow. Ooh. Uh, maybe I even stream it. We'll see. Good. All right. Speaking of other uh, games that are uh, coming up, Final Fantasy VII: The First Soldier has a new trailer, and apparently it's going to be coming out this year. Not a lot of time even left in this year for that. No. I was going to say, are they just trying to bank on holiday purchase? Because it feels like that's what it's going for. Well, I mean, this is a free game, so it's, it's free to play with in-game purchases. Oh, true. So, you know, at this point, they're, they want to be able to continue to pad their uh, their, their Q3, maybe. Mm. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, and I, lo I watched this trailer as well. This probably isn't a game that I am going to play. But I can see uh, a few interesting things coming out of it. Like it talks about how this all started 30 years before the events of Final Fantasy VII. So they've been working on this whole soldier program for, for quite a while. And it took them 12 years until they got some actual good candidates out of it. I mean, given Hojo's typical testing methods, some amount of it I'm sure was just, okay, we need to find somewhere for this set of bodies. Probably. Dude's not a good scientist or a good boss. No. He, he's pretty easy as a boss. You know, you take him down pretty easily in the game. <laughs> Get wrecked! Sorry, right, that, that, was, that, was, that was almost list. as bad as Sayers. Um, This little bit of information was kind of nice coming from, from TGS. Chocobo GP! Final Fantasy Mario Kart Racers. Yes! Finally! I'm stoked! It's coming to Switch in uh, um, 2022. So I'm very happy that I, that I have a Switch coming in, in, in like a week. So, I want to race my Chocobo all day. All day. I need to go buy a Switch. I'm probably buying a Switch for this game. 
Yeah. Realistically. I mean, it might not be as good as uh, Mario Kart, but hey, I mean, a lot of the different uh, kart racers like this um, are still a hell of a lot of fun to play. I really like the Sonic All-Stars Racing and All-Stars Racing Transformed games. So, like, I'm definitely down for playing this. I also really liked Activision's Blur a couple of years ago. Um, so, like, I'm just always... I almost bought the Hot Wheels game yesterday. So, like, I'm definitely down for something, and this, I think, is going to scratch that itch I mean, for me. Also, games like Crash Team Racing, uh, uh, Diddy Kong Racing, or, you know, stuff CTR like that. CTR was good. Diddy Kong, I kind of was eh on, but, like... I'll play all of it anyway. I also have a Seto Corsa, so like if I want to play an actual racing game, I have that. I want to play a game where we throw shells and slime balls and bananas at each other. That's way more fun. It's it is true. So I can't wait to see uh, if they end up having a demo on that. I didn't. I hope so. Yeah, I didn't see much too much information on it online, other than the the fact that uh, I want it now. Yes. So. Also, uh, how do we stream from a uh, from a Nintendo console? Because I kind of think we should. Well, I can do it through uh, um, one of my capture cards. Okay. But uh, as far as getting somebody else's, like I said, you'll have, you, generally you have to have a capture card for something, for, for that console. Okay. I believe uh, PlayStation and Xbox have built-in streaming uh, apps that you can use. They do, but I want to play Chocobo GP against the two mm. of you. Well, you can as long as uh, I'm the one streaming it, and uh, Sarah also has a, 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 a Switch. All right, so Sarah, I got your address. So if you get a box, <laughs> tell me why. <laughs> Just make sure it's not ticking first. Yeah, make sure it's not ticking. It doesn't have a weird smell. Everything all right, Sarah? You haven't moved in a bit. Uh, his camera froze. I think he might have... Uh, Did he seed? He DDoSed on us. He's peaced out for a minute. No! I looked over and I'm like, Hey, Sarah, I'm buying you a Switch. And he's just like, sad boy. I'm like, that's uh, not went. the correct emotional response. <laughs> <laughs> the right. Hey! He's alive! Sponsors too? The fact that you disappeared on us. Oh, yes. Uh, I was once again trying to do too many things at once, and my computer was like, I don't like this. I'm going to crash to teach you to slow down a bit. <laughs> so I you have ADD. The computer doesn't. So I resume in stubborn defiance. All right. Fun side note, Control shift t reopens the last tab you closed. So apparently now you don't have to buy him uh, that, that, that switch anymore. So you're 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 you didn't have to stare at him before. <laughs> I've already got a switch. Oh, you do. Oh, sick! Awesome. Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, you're, even you're, you're, you're going to be joining us in uh, some uh, Chocobo GP when that's released. Sure, that sounds awesome. All right. Excellent. Uh, this is more Final Fantasy adjacent <laughs> news, but uh, uh, the uh, game Triangle Strategy uh, from Square Enix uh, has a a new trailer and a release date as well. Uh, this game is going to be releasing March 4th of 2022. Um, so for those who aren't aware what this is, this is uh, Square Enix's uh, um, foray back into strategy style games, all uh, you know, the tactics style. So this is a game that looks like Octopath Traveler, but plays like uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. I will admit to not being terribly enamored with the name, but I also feel like it's going to just keep growing on me. And like, I mean, Bravely Default is also a pretty stupid name, to it be fair. A, it is great advice for what you should do when you can't make your mortgage payments. Uh, if the, you would the, like investment advice, please look up literally anyone else th other than this man. The view and ZD opinions expressed here on Phoenix and Rage do not affect <laughs> any or should not be listened to at all. <laughs> if you're going to default, do it bravely. Jesus Christ. Anyway, but yeah, sometimes we just have really stupid names for games. I mean, and Final Fantasy. Also kind yeah. of a dumb name. <laughs> yeah. It's like also kind of a dumb name. But I, rem uh, I do remember playing the demo and just being, find it remarkable just how much uh, kind of tactical depth there was. The amount of different battlefield scenarios where you could take advantage of changing conditions. Uh, it felt... Like so many games describe themselves as tactics type stuff, it felt like there's a lot more tactics in terms of taking advantage of 
of there's the areas where you can launch specialty types of attack of having characters with uh, abilities that would change the layout of the battlefield or set up interesting combinations like it was really scratching those itches in a way i haven't had done in a while See, i like and that, that was just in the demo i like that kind of game uh but it, involving little worms thro uh, sending uh, incendiary explosives towards each other oh uh. Also a good game. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, when you when awesome. you when you was talking about you know changing the landscape and 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 that, it's like, hmm, that's the little fun one I remember. <laughs> that's that's some DOS five old school good shit right there. I always end up going to like Dynasty Warriors nonsense. So everyone's got their own thing, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy a Musou game when? Yeah. Right. I'd play the crap and out of that. Going back to our last contest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always wanted, like, the combined uh, Musou game dating sim. I am going to pursue Lu Bu, and you can't stop me. Oh, my. I mean... That's what she said! <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 yeah, or whatever. <laughs> oh. Whatever you're into, man, that's fine. Exactly. I keep Is mixing it though? up. Is it? Oh, no. my. And... That's Thanks, what she George. said! <laughs> oh so... Thanks, Michael. I need to label this shit. You do. What? Do you still oh. not have your soundboard labeled? No, because it change it, it it changes each time. Because I have three different levels of of samples that I can pick through, so it's hard to necessarily label it easily. I feel anyway, like this is a solvable problem. Speaking of other solvable problems, um, there was a discussion uh, held uh, last night between. Uh, the creator of Final Fantasy, Hironobu Sakaguchi, and the current king of Final Fantasy, uh, Yoshi P. That was a little weak, too. Sorry. Yeah. But uh, they had a, a, a little uh, dis hour-long discussion called The Appeal and Potential of RPG. Uh, linked the, uh, the video to that in the, uh, the chat. It'll also be in show notes. It is in Japanese. Uh, you can get some auto-translated English subtitles. It's a little bit uh, uh, wonky, but uh, if you're interested in watching it, give it a shot. Uh, there were. I am sure people are working furiously to provide a better translation yep. as we speak. Pe and people have gone through some of it, and they were able to pull a few uh, nuggets of information about Final Fantasy 16. You know, they didn't talk about it during the Square Enix Presents portion of it, but it doesn't uh, prevent. Uh, our, our lovely Yoshi P from, uh, you know, spilling the beans when he has the opportunity to do so. Yeah. Um, especially, especially if they're talking about, as it said, the title was Charm and Possibilities, so talking about, hey, here's some new ideas we've been exploring. Mm -hmm. He doesn't necessarily have to spoil anything about it to get into, hey, here's some ideas. And we've seen over and over, he's a person who likes discussing the design and a lot of the conceptual stuff behind game making, so yeah. it's a natural opportunity. Yeah, it fit in the context of their discussion, and uh, while they were talking about it, um, we learned that uh, the final pieces of side content are currently being finished right now. Um, the, uh, character models are basically complete and they are, the team is currently working on a number of quality updates, upgrades. Um, he also mentioned that the game features a skill tree system similar to that used in, uh, Sakaguchi's, uh, new game Fantasian, which you can play on, on oh, the, uh, yes. Apple games. Oh, yes, the game's awesome. Yeah. I don't have an Apple product, so I can't play it. I do, but... I guess I could just get an Apple Arcade subscription. I've seen a couple of people streaming it, and it actually looked pretty legit. Yeah, It's really good, but it is on Apple Arcade, so you don't get to just buy it and be done. You have to pay like four bucks a month or whatever, and then just like our PlayStation Plus games, if you don't have that PlayStation Plus, those free games aren't playable. You have to have the Arcade sub to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am not a fan of this. Uh... I don't like it at all. It's really annoying. But like, if you're going to play a game once... Maybe it's fine. Also, if you're gonna get to playing it and getting through it with it in a reasonably quick time frame. Also, speaking of uh, Sakaguchi, kind of in preparation for this uh, discussion that they had, he decided to jump into Final Fantasy XIV, and he's a Lalafell now. I don't think that's him. Yeah. Is it actually him? Yeah. Or is it somebody trolling? No, this is actually him. Okay. It was posted on his Twitter. Yes, I just, I linked his Twitter. Um, okay, I saw the the picture without, uh, 
Oh, okay. Because I saw somebody else had like a picture of someone in Limsa with a sprout leaf. Mm -hmm. And it said here, and Obazakaguchi is the name. And everybody's like, oh, ha ha, isn't that funny? And the people were like, nah, dude, this might actually be him. And like, nobody believed it was him. But he is yeah. playing in, in, uh, in, on a Japanese server, so. That said, right, I, I, don't, like, I don't know if that's like photoshopped on, or if they actually did do a special thing to give him that Helm of Light, because that was a pre-order bonus from 1.0. Was it a pre-order bonus, or was it a collector's edition bonus? It was, it was one of those. I can't even remember. I thought it, it was, was a collector's edition ago. item from uh, uh, 2.0. Whatever I'm pretty it sure was, it's it... Hiro Nobu Sakaguchi, and he has access to Holy and Felcleave at the same time, <laughs> if he wanted to. I'm pretty sure he could just do that. Well, you know, we can always look it up. Yeah. Like, I, I, it would not surprise me if they've been like, yeah, we'll go ahead and add this item for you, because it's mostly a cosmetic thing that also gives, like, a small XP bonus. And it's like, yes, we will add it for you, because why wouldn't we? I would absolutely believe it. I was just amused to see it. Yep, it was a collector's edition bonus from uh, uh, original release or a Realm Reborn. According to uh, Gamer Escape, so. And Chili is saying 1.0 was Onion Helmet and then 2.0 for... Oh. Well, it was an early game collector's edition item. So, there's that. million years ago. Either that or just like he created a character that long ago and then was like, eh, well, I'm not feeling this uh, whole thing, and then came back uh, like eight years later. But then again, he also is Hironobu Sakaguchi. Um, he can have whatever the hell he wants. <sighs> Speaking of what you guys want, I think it's music. We it's... really gotta work on our segues, but yes, let's get to the music. <laughs> what, you don't want music? Okay. And that's Speaking never... of crappy transitions. I think we should just play the song. I'm done with you yeah. both. All right, so we're back to Final Fantasy IX, disc two of the soundtrack. And we jump right into Sid's theme. This is the, not Sid Highwind. This is not... Uh, Sid from Hammerhead. This is Sid Fabul the Ninth. It's interesting that this one has such like a regal feel to it. And then but the actual Sid is a guy who's been transformed into an oglop or into a frog, depending on which point of the game you're in. Super regal theme for super goofy regent. I think he was actually a regent, wasn't he? He was, and yes. Hence their more regal theme. Oh, usually like a regent is someone who's sort of filling in until the actual uh, crown prince or princess is of age to rule. Did they ever establish who that uh, would have been for Lindblom? Was that supposed to know. be Garnet? No, Garnet was for Alexandria. Oh, that's right. Garnet was Alexandria. What the hell was Sid's then? Yeah, I don't know. I, how did I never think about this before now? <sighs> Welcome you to Final it. Fantasy, where we every once in a while discover something that we should have known 20 years ago. You had one <laughs> job. Uh, the princess. That was it. We did that. Yeah, that we one. pulled it off. It was great. Everything went fine. Nothing went bad. We uh, don't have to be that, sad or anything. No, everything is perfect. Everything is wonderful. This is fine. Having to see his father, Not Sid Fabul the Eighth. But yeah. It's still a, like a really is, good song. He is the ruler of a city. He is our usual gadgeteer genius type, having made several airships. But given the many sh shifting faces of Sid over the series, having this one who is in like this kind of uh, formal position of power, the practically King Sid kind of work for something where we're going back to some of those medieval fantasy roots. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the next song since that one goes for a while. This is an interesting song. It also plays in Lindblom, but it plays at a bar. 
This feels like the kind of bar where super shady stuff goes down. Of course, Zidane's there. Yeah. Checks out. <laughs> it's called Out of the Frying Pan. This is where uh, Zidane meets Freya. Oh, yeah. Now, the phrase out of the frying pan usually has the implied into the fire, so, okay, stuff is about to get worse somehow. No, no, never. This is a Final Fantasy game. Why would that happen? Anyways, I'm not quite sure why, what, why that would be implied in the meeting with Freya. Like, the tune absolutely fits with that name of like, hey, we're going into this shady situation. We're likely to make some type of terrible deal and end up in over our heads to some mob boss or something. So all that makes sense. I just have trouble linking it to the, okay, and this is where we join up with Freya. Ravenheart in the chat saying, usually gets worse before it gets better. And yeah, that, that usually tracks for most uh, RPGs. Sometimes it gets worse and then you die. 